All right, this is a follow-up to my latest video. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you do so before watching this video. Now, first and foremost, I would also like to say thank you for um, all of the kind words on my latest video. It um, yeah warms the heart, so thank you. Now, anyway, a few different questions arose, of course, as to be expected, and I thought to respond to um, the most common one. And as you see in the title of this video, I um, did not say it was going to be easy, and let me explain how um, what I mean. Of course, if you embark upon any endeavor, if it's worthwhile, it will not be easy. It will most likely not be easy, and I'm gonna use MMA as a metaphor here. Now, of course, I do want you all to train MMA, so I do want you to go into politics, and I do want to, you to train MMA. For those of you who can, of course, perhaps you are in a situation where you can't do either, but Yes, you know, try to approach this video in, um, you know, view it, view the whole picture. So don't focus so much on the details. Just listen to my words and interpret them in a, in a holistic fashion. So uh, yeah, we're talking about the, uh, we're painting a broad picture here. So anyway, we're looking at MMA. I asked a few years ago for all young men and some women as well. You know, go and train MMA. It's good for you. And then I know, of course, you have a sensitive young man he is going into uh, an MMA club and he's training with all of these tattooed thugs. It might be a bit daunting at first, you might feel a bit out of place, you might feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, of course, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's to be expected and I salute you for you know, for sticking with it, even though you might not feel particularly at home in, in that environment. Uh, but you have to do it anyway, and then eventually you find your inner your inner stability, and then you can bring the, the comfort zone, your comfort zone with you uh, everywhere you go. So keep this in mind, no matter what you do, and now this is some generic self-improvement advice here I'm giving in this video as well, that no matter what you do, it will always be hardest in the beginning. So just accept that and push through it it's um, it will be tough in the beginning now then you have political parties you might be a sensitive young man and you want to do the right thing for European bioculture European civilization your your beloved mother Sweden for example or if you're in Denmark or wherever you might be you want to do the right thing and then you heed my my encouragement and you go into a meeting with a political party and you're surrounded by by dorks who, uh, you know, they have a completely different worldview. They might be soy boys. They might not have any any sense of loyalty to uh, to your nation or to your bioculture or civilization. But you used to have to push through it. You used to have to submit yourself, humbly submit yourself to the fact that it might be a bit tough. Just as for the other sensitive young men who you know pushed through in in MMA sessions or even in the gym. Some guys they find it daunting to go to the gym and they're surrounded by you know a lot of older muscular guys and they don't feel particularly comfortable but they push through it because it's for something greater same thing in politics that you have to just find your inner stability and you need to be comfortable there so first pointer i'm not saying it's going to be easy i'm saying that it's going to be tough but all endeavors that are worth pursuing they are tough especially in the beginning so it is what it is keep this in mind if you feel a bit discouraged over the first few years it's um it's how it's supposed to be uh and uh of course I understand that you would rather spend time in an organization where you have like-minded men and you can do fun things together but you need to you know envision again as I mentioned in the last video use your God-given imagination to envision what it could have been and then you invite a friend to come along to the youth party meeting of whichever party you choose and then you have maybe three or four guys who are you know similar as you and you need to keep your guard up so you don't say anything that will get you booted out of the party. So do keep up your discipline. Now, of course, you can voice your um, you know, normal, normal opinions. You can always voice. You can say that, yeah, I believe that we should expel foreign criminals. It's a mainstream position now. So, of course, you can say it, but keep it at a very moderate level so you don't start to you know, schizomax and talk about things that aren't really relevant to the real political game. And this is also uh, another point I thought to mention that politics, it's not glorious, it's not pretty, it's not, you know, you can't afford to be ideologically pure. You can take the MMA as an example again. 
you can look at something like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it's dirty, it's a sport befitting of a gutter thug basically. And I say this, I have grappled my fair share, I've spent my fair share of time on the grappling mat, uh, both in gi and without gi, mostly without gi because I've trained for MMA. Now, if you if you want to train, if you want to fight in MMA and you don't train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you will be in for a rude awakening, you will get absolutely demolished. You can look at the first UFC, Gracie, he steamrolled the opposition. Some of these guys, they were you know twice the size, well perhaps not twice the size, but a lot bigger, stronger, better strikers. Gracie didn't even, I don't even know if he threw a single punch in that first tournament. He just took them to the ground, submitted them, and they, they didn't know what was going on. And then you might think to yourself, you know, I want to be a radiant paladin. I don't want to do these dirty, ugly footlocks. I don't want to be on the ground grappling. I just want to strike. I want to be, a again, a radiant paladin. I don't want to be a gutter fighter. So I only want to do spectacular and beautiful techniques. But guess what? It's something you can't do. You need to humbly submit yourself to the fact that you need to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So if you do want to train, if you do want to fight in MMA, you need to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Otherwise, you're gonna get mugged. You're gonna get wrecked. Same thing in politics. It's not always a clean business for a radiant paladin sometimes you have to you know you have to play the political game real politic it's not it's not always a clean business so you have to give and take sometimes you have to accept that it's not something for anyone who wants to be ideologically pure and this is what i said in the latest video as well that you need to drop your ideology because your ideology it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is to get into a position where you can actually implement positive change so the only ideology that matters is for us to create a safe society for our children everything is very secondary now of course you can have some smaller um, you know political topics you're interested in perhaps if you are in good old sweden you have a sensitive young man he goes into the moderates uh, that's a standard conservative party or conservative but yeah you can go in there and say i am i'm interested in making sweden a better place for entrepreneurs which is a solid and good position to take i definitely salute it but don't forget that the main point the main reason you are there is to initiate a re-migration process because if we don't then yeah our children will have a very dark future as i said now you might have another sensitive young man in Sweden and he might go into the social democrats and he might say you know what I I believe we should have fair rights for workers which is also a solid position I definitely salute it I believe it too but the main thing is for this to happen we first need to initiate a large scale remigration process so then you can have you know this guy in the moderates and this guy in the social democrats you can bicker and you can dispute about this other political topics but the main point, the main vision is still the same. And we can talk about something else such as religion. I'm a Germanic pagan and I can have heated debates with Christians. But when push comes to shove, we put this aside because we know the that's not the fight. The fight is not a religious one. The fight is about restoring order. And then we can have, later on, we can have this fun debates about Christianity or paganism and uh, free market. We can have uh, libertarian ideas or we can have more socialist ideals. It doesn't really matter. The thing that matters first and foremost is that we have all of these guys completely aligned when it comes to the main topic. That is what it's all about. So that is what I mean with dropping the ideology and don't view politics as an ideological game it's a game of power and you need to suffer through it and you need to humbly accept the fact that you will have some party colleagues who say some some things you don't agree with and uh, everyone is different everyone has a different perspective we have in good old sweden we have Richard jomsov which is a man i respect greatly and he he has a fondness for talking about Israel. He he really likes Israel. Uh, he's very anti-Islam as well. So maybe there is a connection, or of course there is a connection there. Uh, anyway, I I have replied to him on X. I said, you know what, the the Palestine-Israel conflict, it's it's not really our fight. It's not our fight. We have enough problems here in Sweden. So let's focus on those issues. Now I'm saying this with great respect for him because he's been a He's been in the game for a lot longer than I, so I need to respect him. I do respect that he's been taking the heat for a lot longer than I have. I respect him greatly. Even so, I can also voice my disagreement saying that, you know, Israel-Palestine, 
it doesn't matter for us. Let's focus on Sweden now. You don't need to take the heat for someone else's conflict. And this is also something I want to tell all young guys here. Don't take a fight if you don't need to, because there is only one fight that matters. So you can have all of your opinions on Israel-Palestine, you can argue for the most moral position on whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. Focus your attention on getting power to our side. So instead of wasting time all of these discussions, ask yourself how is this bringing power and influence, money to our side? This is what matters. What matters is not to have the correct take on every single geopolitical issue. So focus on getting power for our group. Now anyway, back to Rika Jomsov. Yes, he says many things about Israel and you might not agree with them, but it is what it is. Sometimes you have party colleagues who say things you don't agree with, but you have to focus on the the main issue, which is of course remigration. So you have the the most radical politician in Sweden, the best politician in Sweden, perhaps Rika Jomsov. He he talks about remigration openly now, which is a huge step, huge step for Swedish politics and metapolitics. And he also has this thing for Israel, which is just, okay, I wish he hadn't, I wish he didn't engage himself in a conflict that doesn't concern us, frankly, Uh, but it is what it is. So you don't need to be super ideologically pure all the time. You can voice, as I did, you can respectfully voice your disagreement, but you don't need to, you know, start attacking him in in a unprofessional manner because of it. Same thing, another politician which I like, Fredrik Scherholm, he is in the moderates and the moderates, you know, they have been open borders fanatics for a long time, but he at least, he is in that party and is pushing for more law and order. And here's something to keep in mind, he is in a position, and, and now before saying this, I've never talked to him, I've never met him, I can't speak for him, obviously, I can just say that from an outside perspective if you look at politics. He is probably he probably has you know good views. You can look at his face. He looks is a good looking guy. He is a uh, a guy who's pushing the moderates in a more law and order direction. And now of course it's a bit silly when he talks about all of the solutions to reduce crime when the the proper solution is to initiate a large scale remigration process. But anyway, he's trying to push the party in a better direction. So instead of attacking him saying, oh, you're in the moderates. Yeah, I'm happy that he is in the moderates. I'm happy that he is in that party, Sweden's third largest party, and he's pushing it in a better direction. And he could probably use a lot of backup in the party now because I'm quite certain there are voices in the moderates. You need to keep in mind that in a political party, there is a constant struggle for positions in that party. Realpolitik, it's a it's a gutter fighter activity. Simply put, same as MMA, you need to get your hands dirty. You need to engage in this in these political intrigues. Simple stuff. So anyway, I don't want anyone to attack him because of that. You can push him, you can gently encourage him, as I do by the way. You can say, you know what, Frederick, I know you have the heart in the right place, but you need to focus on what's important. What is important is to initiate a large scale remigration process. Otherwise you can implement all of this Um, new crime policies, it doesn't really matter because the problem is a demographic one. Now something else to mention when we're talking about politics, realpolitik, metapolitics, all of these things that it's very easy to sit on the sideline. So keep that in mind and if you are truly, if you are a a sensitive young man, if you have, if you're not an NPC, you know, the NPCs, they sit on the sidelines and they comment uh, critically about everything. They can afford to do that because they haven't engaged in life in any meaningful way. So you can safely disregard all of these individuals who are gonna second guess you and say that, oh, why do you do this? This is not ideologically pure because they can sit comfortably on the sidelines not do anything at all, not engage in any meaningful way at all, and they can criticize you, saying, why did you say this five years ago? Why did you do this ten years ago? Why did you talk to this guy, or why did you do this? It's very easy for them to say, but if you actually engage in life, yes, you will make mistakes, and this is also why you should be forgiving and humble with others. I don't blame Rikard Jomsov for posting about, you know, something I don't agree with. He's only a human. I'm also just a man. I can make mistakes. It's all good. It's all fine. Um, it happens. As long as you try to improve, as long as you try to learn from your mistakes. And Rikard Jomsov, I don't, I've never met him, uh, never talked to him. I can't speak for him. But I believe that even though we might disagree on certain things, 
he's still a good man, he's still a good patriot, he's a brave man, one of the finest men we have, simply because he has been at it for so long. Same thing with Jimmy Åkesson. You know, he laughed at me. They played my training clips at uh, at an interview and Jimmy Åkesson laughed and said, oh, is this serious? I don't harbor any grudge against Jimmy Åkesson because I don't know what else he would have done. He didn't know what it was about. It was a training motivation video from me. If you watch these videos, yeah, you know that these are meant for you to watch before training yourself. And he got confronted with it saying, oh, what do you think of this? And he, he sort of laughed. Did it hurt me? Oh, maybe a bit, but ultimately I'm not going to be bitter about it. I'm not going to I'm not gonna be bitter at one of the greatest heroes we have in Sweden, Jimmy Åkesson, because he's been at it for a long time. He's taken a lot more heat than I have. I believe Jimmy has taken his fair share of heat over all of these years. He's made mistakes, of course. He's not a paragon when it comes to family life, perhaps. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about that because I, I'm not... He has done more than I, so I'm not going to criticize him and I'm not going to be bitter at him for, you know, not admiring my physique or whatever. I'm sure he admires my physique and he, and he appreciates my work. I'm, I'm sure he does, but he can't say it uh, publicly. Or maybe he doesn't. I have no idea. I can only hope. Um, but anyway, the point is that we all have to drop our egos. We have to humbly submit ourselves to a higher cause. And I say this to you now, dear young sensitive man, that you don't matter. I don't matter either. And I say this because I want you to be happy. The number one recipe for unhappiness is to think that you are the center of the universe and that you are the the most important person alive. Then you will be unhappy because then you will constantly expect the universe to cater to your every wish and whim. But if you instead humbly submit yourself to a higher cause, then you will always be happy because you sort of you you only look at what good do I do and that will be the source of your happiness. So your accomplishments in pushing a certain political goal, that is male happiness. So uh, yeah, a bit of a different topic here, but if you want to be happy, then accept the fact that you're not the center of the universe and that you don't matter. I'm saying this to myself as well, I don't matter. I only matter in my capacity as an agent for European bioculture and civilization. Now, of course, I matter for my children and family and everything like that, but the we're painting with a broad brush here when we say that we as men, we don't matter unless we actually embark upon something that makes us useful. I say this to make you happy. I say this to make you happy in the long run. I say this because it's it's a bit of tough love, if you will, that you don't matter, but you can matter if you do something worthwhile. And if you, when you start acknowledging the fact that you are on a, a higher path, then you will receive happiness. So this is something, I might push this in, in different videos as well, but I want to say it at least that, and I'm saying this because you, you might say, oh, I've been in politics and it made me miserable, but no one cares about if you're miserable or not. It, it really doesn't matter. I've been under intense pressure for the last 10 years. It's a, it's a price I'm willing to pay because it's for the greater good. It's for a good, righteous cause. And same thing for you. Yes, I understand it will be hard for you to do all of these things. I understand it will not be particularly fun always, but you need to do it because it's the right thing to do. Now, going back to the example of MMA, you might have an aspiration. You want to be a pro MMA fighter in the lightweight or welterweight division. You know, tightly packed, a lot of talent in these divisions. It's a bit different if you're a heavyweight or a light heavyweight because the, the talent pool is a lot smaller. But if you go into lightweight or welterweight, you have intense competition from the get-go. And you need to keep in mind that, yeah, all of these other guys, they're competing with you for a spot in the prestigious organizations. So in the UFC, for example, you're going to have a really tough fight and it's going to be, you know, you need to keep your guard up. You need to be very disciplined. So this is MMA, but we're using MMA now as a metaphor for the political game. So you have also in political parties, it's also a fight and you need to keep your guard up. So they will, of course they will, the guys who are already in these positions, they will, they might view you as an ally, they might view you as a potential rival and they will use anything you do, anything silly you do, they will use it against you. And this is why you should never drink alcohol. If you're serious about life, if you're serious about restoring order, if you're serious about your goals, then you don't drink alcohol. Is very simple stuff and you don't engage in any romantic activity within the political. You can't do it because people will hold it against you. So you need to be extremely disciplined and again the main topic of this video, the main, the title, it's not going to be easy. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Same thing if you want to be an MMA fighter, it's not going to be easy there either. You can't afford any mistake ever. 
Same thing here in politics, you can't afford mistakes because they will hold those mistakes against you. So keep that in mind and if you go into a party, view it in that sense that from the moment you go in to the door of the political meeting, it's going to be your guard up. Don't say anything stupid, don't do anything stupid, don't engage romantically, don't start unnecessary drama, don't start any personal conflicts, no alcohol, no drugs, not anything of the kind, because that will set you up, that will stop you. But if you're disciplined, and if you keep your cool, and if you keep marching like a Roman testudo in the desert, you're being ambushed by Parthian horse archers, but you keep you keep marching towards your goal, and then you will eventually reach it. But if you break, break ranks, if you start chasing these Parthian horse archers in the middle of the desert, you will die, they will defeat you. And same thing here in the political game, that it will be hard, and they will most likely try to stop you just as they stop you when it comes to the military or police or college or whatever they are screening hard so you need to be intelligent about these things now on a similar note a while back i had a conversation with two very promising young swedish guys i said to them you know it would be good if you go into the army for a year do your training and you know gain the experience and they said to me we are a bit hesitant because of the lbtq propaganda um, and you know Sweden is now part of NATO so we're unsure if we want to do it and I said you know let's drop the ego let's not think about the ideology of it all you have a unique opportunity to go into one of the best armies in the world to receive free training it, it's even beyond free you get paid for it not a lot but it was a lot for me when I was a humble student you get a monthly a small monthly salary and then you get a, a payment when you're done as well so a year of great training mental physical military all of these things you get a place to stay you get food for free and you get the training and you get money and this experience it's uh, yeah it certainly helped me a lot being a year in the military so you know don't don't find excuses don't find excuses based on ideological purity that you don't want to do this because of yeah the the um, the swedish army they have this very politically correct commercials yeah i understand it looks bad but when you actually do the training in the army you're going to do it with you're going to do it with captains and majors and they don't again i can't speak for them i have no idea but i can just suppose that they don't really care about the political game that is a lot higher up they're there because they probably love Sweden, because they are interested in training in military matters and they're not going to focus on these things. You're going to get good training. Same thing if we're talking about MMA. You might have uh, an MMA club nearby, but they, uh, they play gangster rap there and you don't like the atmosphere because you don't feel at home. It is what it is. You simply have to do it. You have to take the the good with the bad so you have to go in you need to get good training and then you simply have to accept yeah that yeah this is not perfect because you can't wait for for perfect this is a very unmanly attitude to life to simply you know to not do something because you everything isn't perfect same thing with politics the sweden democrats they aren't perfect because they talk about how great israel is all the time it is what it is the main point is that they want to push remigration and that is the top question everything else pales in comparison so take it for what it is stop finding excuses to you know use your ideological purity as a as an excuse not engage in life because that's ultimately what it is you need to go in you need to go in and fight for what you believe in and fight it can be again mma we talk about mma in this video you need to do all aspects of it you need to do cardio you need to do grappling brazilian jiu-jitsu you need to do boxing you need to do all of these things you need to go and train even though you feel like staying home to power game total war or whatever it might be you need to do these things because it's the right thing to do and you can't hide behind ideological purity and sit on the sideline criticizing others saying this initiative isn't good because i don't agree 100 percent with that guy about this it doesn't matter you don't need to agree 100 percent on anything you only need to agree on one thing and that is that we need to save european bioculture and civilization and this by the way we can look at france 
the French election you have on one side you have Front National and the Frenchmen who want to see a remigration process and then you have all of the other parties you have Marxists and liberals and what have you there is only one question that matters and that is mass immigration versus mass remigration nothing else matters and you see this in the real political game in France is a great example to look at you have two positions and then all of the minor issues environmentalism and workers rights and entrepreneurship they fall to the sideline because they the only again I'm repeating myself but it's important the only question that matters is remigration or continued mass immigration now lastly I would also encourage everyone so in the last video I encouraged all sensitive young men or even older men whomever has the opportunity to go into politics to go into a political party to do so it doesn't matter the party uh, you know preferably a conservative party because you you have an easier time to you know put the party in a good direction but ultimately it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is that you actually go into these parties so that was my encouragement my wish my humble request for all all of these guys if you have the opportunity perhaps you've started university college and then you have a uh, you know the opportunity to go into youth party meetings and yeah go go and do it i i encourage you now i will also say the following to everyone who um everyone who is in a position where you can speak your mind without being afraid of losing your job that do it speak your mind as often as possible because metapolitics it will influence politics it does it truly does so the more guys and girls the more men and women who say a certain thing the more easy the easier it will become for politicians to actually implement these changes so you know metapolitics and politics they work in tandem with each other and if you have um, a politician in whichever party and he or she says you know what i think there is a popular support for Remigration, because we need to keep in mind also that politicians they need votes they need votes so they can always look at popular sentiment and they can say to their party colleagues you know what if we want to stay in power here we need to look we need to listen to the people and they say all of the voters i've talked to they say that we want tougher measures on crime so therefore here's a proposition and then the party colleagues they will say yeah okay yeah you know i've heard the same thing so you need to understand everyone needs to understand that humans are that humans can be influenced you can influence humans i know this firsthand because i have and i'm gonna praise myself now i'm not not so humble in this video i'm gonna praise myself saying that i've converted many many guys some women as well to a better worldview to a worldview which says that you know you take your own people first so it's fully possible to influence even older individuals so keep that in mind so keep it keep it up everyone who works metapolitically let's keep the the pressure on let's uh, let's set a high pace and then also lastly of course if you are in a position where you can't speak your mind but if you uh, if you are in a position where you have a stable income yeah then by all means do support us who are working metapolitically because without you we can't do this and again i'm happy to do this work i'm happy to take the heat as long as i get the support so that is something as well you can do and uh yeah it's it's right and proper to do not so not so fun to say of course but it is what it is we need to be honest about this as well so anyway that was my rant my forest rant for the day i hope it made sense and uh yeah whatever you do Try to be as serious as possible. Do try to take it seriously. Take yourself serious. And yeah, good times, good stuff. We are going to win. We need to put in a lot of work, but winning here is fully possible. Saving European bioculture, civilization, it's fully possible. It will be harder in some cases, easier in some cases, but it's fully possible if we use our powers of imagination and uh, we envision a brighter future. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, XXO. Boom.